Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another Atari 2600 classic. This time we're playing Riddle of the Sphinx, made by iMagic in 1982. iMagic has not been around for a long time, so don't worry if you've never heard of them before, but they did release quite a few games for the 2600, and for me, their most memorable title was Riddle of the Sphinx. I liked the game quite a bit as a very young child, though I don't remember if I ever actually figured it out, because Riddle of the Sphinx, while it's mostly an action game, there are adventure elements, you are collecting items, you have to figure out what to do with those items, and hopefully solve the riddle. What is this riddle of the Sphinx? I guess let's start the game and find out. We choose our difficulty to begin with. Level 3 is the hardest difficulty, so we might as well go with that and just see what this game has to offer. The game is started. We see a sword, or what looks like it, in the bottom. It's not a sword, though. It's a spade. We are the Prince of Egypt. We have to travel across the land. Oh no, my spade was stolen. Just like that. The land has been cursed by the god Anubis. There's, oh, and there's Anubis right now. I could shoot him. He won't do anything. Well, I say shoot him, I'm actually throwing rocks. It actually hurts me to shoot Anubis, because even though he is the antagonist, he's also a god. We do have to show respect. See, I'm getting slower as I get hurt and as I begin to get thirsty, because the desert's hot. That's a pyramid. I, I can't do anything here. These are nomadic traders who... Oh, he gave me my spade back. Up ahead is the goddess Isis, who's really our only friend... She heals us, and she also gave me a necklace. We're fighting scorpions. We're fighting stone-wielding thieves. You got a shield. The traders can give us items, or they can take them away. If we have no items, we really do want to touch as many traders as possible. If we have a lot, then we have to think about that, because they might take our rare items. This is an oasis. Anubis, no! Anubis does not... He has a grudge against the land of Egypt. He wants everyone to die. He is the god of death, but I don't know. It doesn't actually say in the manual why Anubis is so mad, why he casts this curse. But we play the prince of Egypt, who has to appease Ra in order to get him to lift Anubis' curse, as I guess Ra is the only one who can. This nomad is not doing anything. Those stone-wielding thieves will take my stuff if they touch me. Gasp. Behold, the phoenix. The fire bird who rises from death. Surely the phoenix can help us in our quest against Anubis, as Anubis has no hold on the phoenix. And they just made that sound again. I'm, I'm moving so slowly because I am so hurt. I don't know what to do with the phoenix, but oh no, I can't pass by! The phoenix creating some kind of force field which prevents me from moving forward. So now, if you haven't read the manual, you will not know what to do. I mean, for one thing, you might not even know how to use items. Because this is a game that requires you to use the second Atari 2600 joystick to select items. So I can, if I knew that, I, then I can pick the water and I can drink it. I could pick the spade and dick. Oh, that thief. Stole my my shield, I think I had. I can use a spade to dig around, and I got... Oh, the scepter. The scepter is a great weapon. It's a great item, I should say. Because it lets us move around real fast, but not fast enough for the phoenix. So what do we do? How do we solve the riddle of the sphinx? If we can't even get to the sphinx, the phoenix is not letting us by. The only thing we've really found so far... No, Anubis, not you. No one wants you, Anubis. No one likes you or wants to invite you to their parties. The pyramid. What do we do with that? We don't know. We're going to have to consult the manual. Which, if you are a very young child and you are just kind of hammering the, the button on the 2600 joystick without really knowing what's going on, it might not occur to you to read the manual. Like, it didn't really occur to me. However, if we read the manual, we will get some clues as to what's going on in this game and how we can progress. 
Okay, let's take a look at this manual. Now, before we actually look at the text, take a look at that picture. That was what the box art looked like. Now, you see a game that looks like that on the store shelves. How can you not buy it? Look at that. That's what you would imagine the game looks like. And as you're playing it, this is, you know, the image that's in your mind. It's like this space Egypt thing that's going on. To me, that is irresistible. It still is. All right, let's go to the text. So as we start the manual, we can get an idea of what the story is all about. These are dark times. Death's long shadow rests across the Valley of the Kings. Anubis, jackal-headed god of the dead, has cast his curse over all of Pharaoh's kingdom. A plague of scorpions and hordes of thieves lie thick upon the land. Thou hear the thin whine of despair. Sing of Pharaoh's son, all hail the Prince of Egypt. Deliver us from this curse. Brave the dangers of the desert. Seek the answer to the riddle of the Sphinx. Pay Anubis' ransom with your treasures, O oh, cunning Prince of Wiles. Reach the Temple of Ra, source of light and life. Pharaoh's heir, be wise, be wily. And beware! Alright, so that's a pretty good idea of what the story is all about. We have this curse that's upon the land. I don't know what Anubis's problem is. But, it, okay, as it says, we travel back to ancient Egypt. We're under a vile curse. We're the prince of Egypt. We have to free the land. So how do we do this? Well, that's us. We can recognize us. I do like that they're not they don't actually try to draw the prince. They're just showing you straight out what he looks like in the game. I mean, it's the manual. It's meant to be functional. So, yeah, that works. That's letting us know which of those characters on the screen is the prince. Talking about the game mechanics such as thirst, such as wounds. They slow us down. That's all we really need to know. Okay, the people we meet on our trip. The thieves, the scorpions, the nomadic traders. And then Isis, the goddess. Oh, and Anubis. We don't want to see him. I don't know why he even feels he can hang out here anymore in Egypt after what he's done. We have a number of items that we can use. We saw only a few during a short time that we were playing the game. And this is all well and good, but not really what we need. Now, if we look on the right-hand page, we start to see what we do need. It mentions that before leaving his father's palace, the prince received advice from the royal astrologer. The astrologer is the one who really knows what we have to do. And he gave the prince some enigmatic advice. Son of Pharaoh, avoid youthful folly. Make offerings at sacred places, pyramids, the phoenix, the temples of Isis and Anubis, the Sphinx, and the Temple of Ra. So, we need to make offerings. Now, we went by the pyramids and we couldn't really do anything. However, when we got to the phoenix, we were stuck. The phoenix would not let us by. So, we have to figure out what kind of offering we need for it. The royal astrologer gave some more specific clues about what we might need at each of the locations we'll meet in ancient Egypt. The pyramids, the phoenix, the temple of Isis, the temple of Nubis, the sphinx, and the temple of Ra are goal itself. Let's see what the astrologer wrote about these different things. Rare gifts await he who unlocks the age-old mystery of the pyramids. The fire bird, newly risen from its ancient ashes, can provide you with a key to the riddle you seek to solve. You will know what gift to offer it if you unroll and read the writing on your heart. 
gentle Isis, goddess of all that is good. Her temple in the desert is as a precious jewel in Egypt's crown. Offer her a gift worthy of an empress. Temple like a tomb, vaulted home of death. You will have found its key in the circle that does not end, the sign of life's eternal rebirth. Inscrutable marvel, find the offering it seeks and you will have solved its riddle. A bird can fly over, a scarab crawl past, or a lion stalk by. Son of Egypt, turn to these, it is written as on stone. Ra has all. What need has Ra of wealth? Offer instead that which stands, yet cannot stand, that which journeys far, yet has no legs, that companion you rely and lean upon, yet never think to call friend. So these are the clues that the royal astrologer has left for the prince of Egypt. It mentions that the journey ends when either the prince reaches the temple of Ra, makes the correct offering, and his treasures are accepted, or we die of wounds. You know, Riddle of the Sphinx, much more uplifting than the last 2600 game we looked at, Spider-Man, in which the only way the game could end was when we die, or all of Spider-Man's clones die. Not here, not here. The prince can actually win. He can beat Anubis and lift the curse. There are game variations. As you saw, we chose Game 3, which the manual defines as the Supreme Challenge. Basically, what happens here is that we have to make two offerings at each of the sacred places. And it mentions that the astrologer has given some clues, additional clues that we only need in Game 3. Because only one treasure will satisfy uh, and earn us the inner strength points as well as perhaps give us something in return. The other object will lift the force field that blocks us from, from moving on. So we need two offerings for the phoenix, first of all. That's where we got stuck. So let's read the astrologer's final clue about this second offering. The first is rooted in relief. The next you'll find well found. The last of three is a cloak you wield when enemies abound. So there are three locations where we'll need a second offering, and this little riddle might tell us what those second offerings are. And that's apparently the end of the manual. It has an address at the very end. You can, it says, if we wish to possess so rare a treasure, we can write to the son of Thoth in Los Gatos, California, which is where the son of Thoth resides. You see, there was a, a $1,000 prize advertised on the box for the first person who could solve the riddle of the Sphinx and complete the entire game. Well, when they say solve the riddle of the Sphinx, they mean actually completing the game, not actually just passing by the Sphinx, which you can see its riddle right there. I wonder what it could mean. Well, anyway, we've gotten these clues from the Royal Astrologer, and I think that's what we need to start on our way to save Egypt. Thank you to archive.org for having the scans of the manual. Uh, because I could not find it anywhere else. So let's head back to the game and let's use our newfound knowledge to attempt to save ancient Egypt from Anubis's curse. Okay, here we are, back in the game. Let's go back to difficulty number three and let's start off. We begin once again as the Prince of Egypt with a spade. Now, we were going... Oh, there's Isis. Why don't we say hello? Okay, we got something from her. Some kind of ankh. However, we started last time by going forward. How about we reverse that conventional wisdom and go backwards? It seems dangerous, because we can't actually see what we're walking into. We could run into thieves or scorpions. They could steal our new treasure that we just got from Isis. 
There does seem to be something down here, though. Except this is as far as we can go. Well, at the very least, there is an oasis down here. We might as well take a drink, replenish our thirst. We are starting to slow down a little. Oh. We took a drink, as usual, but we got a staff by doing that. Well, we might as well take that with us. And as we're going up, let's uh, talk to these traders. We don't have too many items, so there's a good chance we'll get items instead of losing them at this point. Oh. Someone just took the thing that Isis gave me. Took that onk, and I am not happy about that. I think I might have walked backwards into a, into a thief. Let's use the spade that we got. See if we can find anything. Or if we could just make annoying noises. It does that too. Not finding anything so far. Here's a pyramid. We might remember what the astrologer said. However... Oh, hold on. My spade worked, and I got what is a crown. Kind of hard to tell with that icon, but that is what it is. Ah, trying to get past these guys. Now, oh, got hit with a rock and another. That's not good. We're walking very slowly now. Let's see what this trader can give us. Okay. Gives us, gave us a scroll. Now, the astrologer did say that treasures would await he who unlocked the pyramids, but it doesn't seem like we have anything we can use for that. Oh, we got another spade. There's an oasis up here. Might as well see if we can find... Oh, there we go. Oh, hey, we got that thing we got from Isis back. That onk. A bit hesitant about talking to the traders now, because they might take st uh, stuff from us. We do have a few things at this point. We might just want to head on up until we... Oh, t yep, the phoenix. How you doing? Let's consider the royal astrologer's clue about this one. Okay, so the writing on our hearts. Unroll it and read it. We have this scroll... And that's what the phoenix wanted. It gave us a key. A key, you say? Well, a key can be used to unlock things. Maybe something that may have great treasure inside. Why don't we head back down? Yeah, drink from that oasis while we're at it. And hopefully we can avoid any thieves stealing this key we just got. Or anything else, really. Down here somewhere, I missed all the camels. Okay, there's the pyramid. Select this key. All right, and we got we got a thing. We got that thing. It's hard to tell what that is, but that's a tablet with a bird on it. It's kind of kind of hard to see, but that's what that is. Just trust me on this. There's no way of actually getting the key. I think before we actually get to the first pyramid, because the only way to get that key is to appease the phoenix. So we do have to go back, no matter what. And we are starting to slow down. Oh, there's that oasis. We do have a jug of water and a tannis leaf, and these things can quench our thirst and heal us, respectively. But, since there's an oasis right here, we might as well take advantage of it. Instead of using our precious water that we can, ha we can carry with, it on with us on the go. There's Isis. Does she have anything for us? I think okay, yeah, I think she gave us a goblet. And all these thieves want to steal it real bad. Now, we could try... Hold on, let me get rid of this thief. We could try to pass by the phoenix. Nope, phoenix is not having that. It gave us the key. Want something else. Now, the royal astrologer did say... What did he say about the second offering that's needed? The first is rooted in relief. Well, something that used to have roots and can give us relief is this tannis leaf. That's what it wanted. And we continue on. So, 
you have to read the manual and you have to decipher these mon- Oh, Isis didn't give us anything. I think I might not have approached her correctly. The manual does say you have to do it just so. I like that they kind of work that into the story. You might not approach Isis with the proper respect, and she might not heal you or give you an item, as opposed to, to there just maybe being a problem with the collision. I like that. More games should do that. You should have more games, modern games coming out that explain their limitations or glitches with story reasons. I like that. Okay. Isis. Oh, oh did someone take something from me? Someone did. I'm not, I'm not sure what we lost. Okay, this is Isis's palace. What did the Royal Astrologer have to say? A gift worthy of an empress. No, th stop. Th oh, these stones. So many stones hitting the prince of Egypt. Thieves have no respect. The king has obviously lost his grip on the land. Poor pharaoh. All right, here's the... So what's the gift worthy of an empress? Well, that's a crown. Like I said, you have to take my word for it. And we did that, and we got a key. We have not encountered a second pyramid, so we don't have to go back. Now, what was the second offering that was needed? We'll find well found. Now, I'm not really sure how you're supposed to interpret that, but the gift is the, the jug of water. Now that we've given that, there's no force field anymore. Yeah, that one, I'm not really sure how you interpret that. The next you'll find well found. I, I'm not really sure what that means. Let's see if the... Well, we don't have too many items left right now. Let's, uh... Oh. The traitor... The, well, the characters vanish when they leave the screen, so... That traitor was gone. Let's see about this traitor. He has anything for us? Yes, he gave us a Tannis Leaf. That'll heal us if we need it, but we don't need it as an offering. Anubis, you have nothing you can give us. And you're, look at you blocking that thief. You know we can't shoot you, Anubis. That only hurt us. Traitor. He gave us a shield. That can help us in our combat against the endless thieves and scorpions. Alright, the second pyramid. Let's get Isis's key. And we have a new tablet. Uh, I believe that is of a scarab on that tablet. I mean... Yeah, it's kind of reaching, but let's just assume it's a it's a scarab. I think that's what it is. All right, we're continuing on. We're making some uh some good progress here, even though we are slowing down. I think it's just because of thirst, not because of damage, and I don't have my jug of water anymore. So we're going to have to find an oasis or else we could dehydrate out here. So as you can see, this could be a bit of a frustrating game if you're used to action games and you're wondering why is it you have to use these items or maybe you didn't read the manual and you don't actually know you can use the second controller to select items. That can be frustrating. Oh, we got a treasure. It's the Disc of Ra. Let's hold on to that. If a thief touches us, I think that'll be one of the first to go, because it's a treasure. All right, Temple of Anubis. Anubis, I don't think you deserve anything, but what did the Royal Astrologer say about this? Okay, the circle that does not end. The sign of life's eternal rebirth. Well, the closest thing I can think of that we have is this Ankh. No. Oh. And that worked. It gave us a key. So, once we encounter another pyramid, I just really want to get rid of that guy. There we go. The prince, his stone-throwing skills are unsurpassed. Okay, once we find another pyramid, then we'll be good to go. But what else might Anubis need to let us buy? Because this force field is still there. A cloak we wield when enemies abound. Well, when enemies abound, you kind of want to use a shield. Yeah, that's what Anubis needed. All of these traitors, they might have good things for me, but... I don't want to risk that they take one of these tablets. 
Because that's happened. And these are one-of-a-kind items. I'm not sure if we can get them back if we make another offering to the temples and get the key and go back to the pyramids. I'm not sure if we can do that. But I have lost tablets before. So I don't really want to touch these traders. They're not really traders. They, they either give us stuff or they steal stuff. And that's not really trading. Oh, Isis. Do you have anything for us? The goblet, yes. Okay, the pyramid. Let's get out our, our last key to the last pyramid. And what do we get? What treasures are unlocked? It is another tablet. That one is a lion. Hmm. Bird, scarab, and lion. We've heard those of those animals in that order before. Any ideas, Isis? She thinks crown. Yeah, crown's not bad. Scepter's better, but crown is not bad. Now, I, I, just, I don't know what the... Why these thieves are all hoarding on the Prince of Egypt. Do these thieves work directly for Anubis? Does Anubis affect... Uh, yeah, I'm talking about you. You heard I was talking about you. You know it. You're just going to casually saunter at me, knowing I can't do anything. Well, I'm going to break your curse, Anubis. I'm almost there. Do these guys work for Anubis consciously, or does Anubis affect them subconsciously? And such a sight, such a sight before us, the mighty Sphinx. Can we solve its riddle? What was that riddle again? Hmm. A bird can fly over, a scarab crawl past, or a lion stalk by, and they are written on stone. So, clearly we're talking about these tablets. The, the Sphinx wants one of these tablets? Yes. Which one? It's random. We have to just try them out. It did not want the bird. What does it think of scarab? Oh, it likes scarab. Congratulations, we have solved the riddle of the Sphinx. Such as it is. Not, I mean, I guess if, I guess if you weren't sure what those tablets were, and if we didn't have the clues of the royal astrologer, that might be a lot, a lot tougher. And we did have to get, we did have to make the, uh, the offerings at each of the, the places to get the keys, to get the, the tablets. We might have not gotten all of them, and if we didn't get the one we needed, well, we're stuck. We can't advance. The Sphinx will not let us. I don't know why everyone seems to be on Anubis' side, though. I mean, you'd think the Phoenix and the Sphinx and Isis, you'd think they'd want us to advance. Seems like everyone has it out for the people of Egypt. Finally, we have made it. This is our destination, out in the middle of the desert, where none go except thieves, and there's a goddess. She's here. I guess she's not coming down here. All right, let's see if we can block... Okay, it looks like that we're... the stones are going to be blocked by the temple. Okay. Ra, tell me, mighty Ra, what you want. What did the, Ra... what did the royal astrologer say about Ra's desires? All right, so the royal astrologer correctly points out that, well, what does God need with a starship? What does Ra need with these treasures? Rather, we should give Ra the thing that accompanied us on this journey, but we never thought to call it friend. Yeah, it's the walking stick. You figured that out. We give it to Ra, and then Ra accept that thief getting one more stone in. Getting the last laugh. But maybe we got the last laugh. We give Ra the staff, and because we do this, he now accepts our treasures. We get points for the treasures. We get more points for the more treasures we end up here with. And when the screen turns ochre, I guess that represents the curse being lifted from ancient Egypt. The riddle of the Sphinx has been solved. The Prince of Egypt returns home 
as a hero. No infinite deaths, no infinite super bombs to defuse while knowing it's all hopeless. No, the, the Prince of Egypt had a quest. And he went on that quest, and he solved it, thanks to his royal astrologer back at the palace, and thanks to the help of Isis. Uh, and uh, some thanks go to the traitors, but not all of them. And the thieves, scorpions, and Anubis, well, they, can, they know what they can do with themselves. They know. We've saved Egypt and solved the riddle of the Sphinx. I was never able to figure that out as a little kid. I'm, like I said, I'm trying to think about it, and maybe I just never read the manual. Maybe I just kind of banged on the joystick and watched the little man walk around on the screen. I was about that age. I think that's basically what I would have been getting out of video games at that point. Uh, but we have solved it. The curse is lifted. However, there's some other things we could look at, not in the game, but some... Uh, some other materials I came across when looking for the manual for Riddle of the Sphinx to kind of, well, to kind of give additional flavor to the game. Let's take a look at something. Here's an ad for Riddle of the Sphinx, uh, thanks to AtariMania.com, which is where I found this. So I guess this ran in a video games magazine back then. We can see that Gary Larson, he thought he had all the answers. He was wrong. He could not solve Riddle of the Sphinx. Look at him. Look at the wreck that this game has reduced him to. And look at all these books he's reading. He, he read a book all about riddles. He read a book about how to play video games. He read a book about winning. Just winning. Just how to win. Just winning. Just how to do that. It's a book all about it. And a book on Egyptian history. Despite all this... Gary Larson could not beat Riddle of the Sphinx. He's, he's so broken up about it. He, he shouldn't leave his cookies on the console. He, he's going to get crumbs all over it. He's going to get them in the grooves, and it's hard to clean those out. D don't do that, Gary. You can see the box for Riddle of the Sphinx there. It has that Space Egypt scene front and center, so obviously you have to buy it. And hopefully you will not end up like Gary Larson. It looks like his glasses are broken. Did the game do that? Gary, has Anubis been hitting you? Gary, we're here for you. You don't have to keep it a secret anymore. According to this, Gary has an IQ of 162. He gets straight A's and a whiz at chess. And then he became a wreck. Thanks to Riddle of the Sphinx. He was attacked by the thieves, the scorpions, tortured by thirst. Yep. Happened to all of us. Okay, so he passed the Sphinx, the Temple of Isis, and the Great Pyramids, and he reached the Temple of Ra. He presented his treasures. Oh, he didn't have the staff. And Gary went back and tried it again. Okay, so that explains why Gary is so frustrated. He never realized you have to walk backwards at the beginning of the game to get the staff. He made it through. Actually, he figured out most of the game. He figured out the uh, royal astrologer's clues. He solved the riddle of the Sphinx, it seems. Uh, but just, he never got the staff. And the, honestly, that is kind of cheap. You know, the game never really... I get, Okay, so I guess you do walk backwards and... Okay, so the part where you pass the Phoenix, you have to walk backwards to get to the Pyramid. And I guess that's the thing that's supposed to clue you in to the fact that you can walk backwards... And maybe then you should think about doing that at the beginning of the... Okay, so, hey, maybe that was actually kind of good game design. The fact that the first pyramid appears before the phoenix, forcing you to walk backwards. And maybe you'll think about doing that in other places, such as the beginning of the game. It never occurred to Gary, though. It never occurred to Gary. His brain is fried. Due to the riddle of the Sphinx. I wonder what Gary Larson is doing today. He's probably still in that same library. Still in anguish over not being able to beat Riddle of the Sphinx. Poor Gary. Poor Gary. Now that Riddle is an... Oh, hold on. requires more strategy than any other game in this volume. 
Mm-hmm. Sure, there's some hand-eye coordination needed to kill or avoid your enemies. Uh, there is. That alone won't get you high scores. He's completely what correct. Is which objects and treasures are useful on your journey and where you can find them. That's right. Y you have to figure that out. To help with that, perhaps you should make a small map, listing in order the various landmarks you come to. I didn't think to draw out a map. That is genius. I should have drawn out the entire game. By the way, this is a, a strategy guide, a video strategy guide of how to solve From riddles the Sphinx. Scene, head down screen, keeping to one side to avoid bumping into enemies. Also Trade found on AtariMania.com. As they will give you useful objects like this shovel. Mm -hmm. Go to the oasis and you'll receive a walking staff automatically. Oh, it's t giving you the Head big north, tips right away. The evil god Anubis, but always go to Isis, who bestows gifts, as do most nomads. Checks out. We passed by the first pyramid because we didn't have the key we needed. During this lull in the action, we make use of our shovel by digging around for treasure mm -hmm. and come up with the scepter. Now we can trade our scroll to the phoenix for the key needed back at the first pyramid. Did it not talk about the first offering? After positioning the cursor over the scroll, touch the bottom of the phoenix and we receive a key. Maybe this is a lower difficulty. Now it's time to return to the first pyramid. Stay to one side of the screen and move south, killing scorpions and rock-throwing thieves for points. If you have a lot of treasures, a nomad might steal from you, so we'll pass this one by. This LP is informative, but it's a little Notice dry. How you can dodge behind camels, palm trees, and obelisks, using them like shields between you and your enemies. Maybe the LP -er should have thought of a face cam or something. Act all scared of the scorpions the first and such. Pyramid will appear on the left side of the screen. Move across the screen and position yourself directly below its center. Move the right. cursor over the key and touch the pyramid. Like magic, the key is replaced by a tablet. Magic? Offer anything other than the key, and the pyramid will give you nothing in return. Yep, just makes a loud beep. The evil god Anubis, who sometimes appears twice on the same screen, cannot be shot. Avoid contact with him at all costs. Keep your eyes on your thirst factor. As it increases, you get slower. <laughs> oh, there's Either the face the cam. Water, if you have one, or make tracks for the nearest oasis. That, that's not what I imagined her to look like from this voice. Refreshed, we can move at full speed once again. That's why I always kind of think it's weird when you see someone who you're familiar with because of their voice, but you don't know what they look like. Like, I would not have expected this LP -er to look like the that. Temple of Isis, we select a gift. In this case, nothing but the crown of Isis will do. Mm -hmm. we proceed to the temple. However, enemies can interrupt our business here, so we take care of them first. Then we trade the crown for a key. The key is needed here at the second pyramid where we can trade it for another tablet. There are no oases between the second and third pyramids, and as you can see from our thirst factor, we need water. So we're going to pass by the Temple of Anubis, where if we had time, we would trade an Ankh for a key. You know, I, pl Luckily, I applaud the effort put into this LP. There's so much editing. Heals our wounds. It's a great we pass wipe. by the third pyramid because we don't have a key to trade for a third tablet. We can also pass right by the Sphinx in game variation 1, but would need to offer it a tablet in variations 2 and 3 to continue. Here we are at the Temple of Ra, where we can unload our treasures and end the game. Watch as Ra takes away gifts that will add points to our score. Notice he is not interested in the shield, the staff, the tannis leaf, or the scroll. In game variations 2 and 3, you need to offer Ra the correct gift or he will not accept your treasures. Mm -hmm. Give him the walking staff. It is all Ra desires. Yeah. Ra has no need of riches. All Ra wants is what's important to you. You know, a genuine offering from the heart. Uh, so you can see that on the lower difficulties, Riddle of the Sphinx is a lot easier, uh, which is kind of weird that... Uh, I, Kind of weird that, uh, thinking about it, why did I have so much trouble with this game as a little kid? If, I mean, on lower difficulties, you don't even need two offerings, and when you get to the Temple of Ra, you don't even, even need to offer the staff. You just offer the treasures. But anyway, there you go. In extremely early Let's Play of Riddle of the Sphinx. I, like I said, informative, but pretty dry. Uh, video quality could have been better. I mean, what does he have this hooked up to his capture card with? Composite? 
Actually, no, the composite would have been too good for the 2600. It could only do RF. And there, there was a little bit of face cam thrown in, which is always a nice plus. You always want to see that. But I think that uh, the innovation of having the face cam in the corner of the screen going on for the entire LP uh, had not yet been developed uh, when this was done. Game came out in 1982. I don't know the year that this strategy video was made. Couldn't have been too long after that. So, LP is quite an ancient and time-tested practice, almost as ancient as ancient Egypt itself. That's Riddle of the Sphinx, who was one of my favorite Atari 2600 games, and I feel good that I have finally saved ancient Egypt, lifted the curse, and... I mean, Anubis is still alive. He's the god of death. He can't ex actually die. But I guess we showed him what for. We showed him what for. And I'm going to assume all of those thieves that were attacking the prince will be horribly tortured and executed by Pharaoh in his wrath. That's it for Riddle of the Sphinx for the Atari 2600. <laughs>